Hello, everybody. It's Alex once again from the Remote Work Life podcast. And I have with me today another great guest. I have Greg Walters uh, from HubSpot. He is head of culture and learning and development uh, on an international basis for HubSpot. He looks after uh, culture and, and learning for HubSpot. And I wanted to find out more about HubSpot because HubSpot being one of my favorite remote businesses. And I also wanted to find out more about Greg, having looked at the, the way he's, his career has progressed, the way he's transitioned, and also his dedication to his, to his craft. These are all things that really led me to want to, to know more about him. So Greg, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me, Alex. I'm excited to be here. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. And as I said, HubSpot for years now has been one of my favorite I mean, businesses actually of all time, you know, remote businesses as well. I only found out after I started using the platform that it was a remote business and it kind of solidified my, my, uh, my interest in, the, in the, the platform and the business. But I've never been able to sort of, I suppose, delve as deeply as I wanted, hence my invitation to you uh, on, on the podcast. Mm. So let's begin, shall we? Let's, let's first and foremost, I want to find out about you, uh, Greg. So tell us, tell me about yourself. Yep. So I, yes, my name is Greg Walters. I work for HubSpot. I've been with the company for five and a half plus, actually going on six years in August. Um, I started as the first member of the learning and development team here in the JPAC region. I should mention I'm based in Singapore. Um, and then I built the learning and development team here in region. I joined the culture team in 2020 uh, and kind of built that team here in region. And then I started looking after culture in our EMEA region as well in 2021, I suppose it was. Uh, so I've been doing kind of different things uh, year on year during my time here at HubSpot. Uh, so it's always been a a fun, you know, learning and growth opportunity for me. There's always something new to do in a growing company like HubSpot. Yeah, it's always good when you've got, you know, things to keep you interested, but it sounds like you've been immersed yourself in what's going on. It sounds like you've been re very important in terms of um, building the, the, the foundation of, of, the, of the team that you work in and the, and the business as well in general. Um, and what, 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 I suppose, what, attracted you to, to to HubSpot? Why HubSpot? So for me, I taking one step back, prior to HubSpot, I was in sales. So I was a sales rep for a while, and then I managed sales teams for a little over five years. And um, there came a point when I decided that sales was no longer for me. Uh, I was doing well, but it's it's a bit of a grind, and I just really enjoy working with people and wanted to somehow move more into a people-focused role. And just through my job search, I stumbled across HubSpot. I was not otherwise aware of HubSpot, um, but it was my their culture code that I first fell in love with. So for folks that aren't familiar, there is a slide deck uh, that gets updated kind of in real time. Uh, I think it has something north of like 5 million views, but it outlines our culture. And, um, you know, as part of researching HubSpot, I read that. I went on Glassdoor. They've got great reviews on Glassdoor. And through the interview process, I started to realize that it wasn't just marketing material, the culture code. It was uh, a lived reality for the folks working there. And it, the culture code itself really resonated with me. And I decided that was the type of company that I wanted to be a part of and wanted to contribute to. No, it sounds good, and I think it's always good, isn't it? It's it's a it's a good reminder that when you're when you're doing your research, it 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 pays to actually just go beyond the job description, doesn't it, and dig a little bit deeper, not just for the sake of um, the conversations that you're going to have, at, you know, with people you're potentially going to be working with, but for your own sort of um, you know, you want you want some sort of connection, don't you? You want some sort of alignment between yourself. Uh, and the business that you're going to be working in um, for your own long, you know, longevity in that particular role. And you've, I guess you're a testament to that because you've been there, like you said, for the last five or so, um, five or so years. So there must be something 
good. Uh, well, there must be lots of things that are good about, you know, not just yourself in that role, but um, HubSpot uh, as well. Um, and obviously, uh, HubSpot is, uh, uh, I mean, how do you categorize yourself? Because some co companies dif differ in the way they categorize themselves from a remote perspective. Some say that they're fully distributed, some say fully remote, others say remote first. How, how does uh, yeah. HubSpot fit in that sort of scheme? I think we would describe ourselves as hybrid. So we're all mm -hmm. in on hybrid work. And by that, we mean that everyone has the opportunity to choose for themselves. Um, mm -hmm. We believe that each individual knows best where and when they do their best work. And so for us, it's all about flexibility and choice. Um, and so we are quite distributed at this point. Like, I don't even know how, if we wanted to unwind it, we could unwind it. We've got folks all over the four <laughs> corners of the globe. Um, but that's, you know, when I say the word hybrid, that's what I think. It's not uh, an individual that has to spend so much time in an office and versus so much time at home. It's everybody gets to decide what's right for them, um, unless they're in a specific role like, you know, office manager or facilities where they have to be on site. Mm -hmm. And have you, again, I think, like you said, it's good to have that flexibility, for, you know, and I think remote work, is a personal thing. It affects people in different ways. Um, people benefit in different ways as well, um, which is the beauty of it. Um, you're, you're working on a hybrid basis, so that that again, it's it's uh, or at least the company's hybrid. How has it benefited you uh, working in that way? In a number of ways. So I I guess I didn't realize, you know when I was working full time from an office pre pandemic, <laughs> um, you know, how much deep work was necessary to my role and how much kind of reflection I needed to do to be successful. And I could and did do those things in an office, but you know, anyone working from an office will know that it's a social space. And so you'll have people stopping by your desk, tapping you on the shoulder. And if you're trying to be deep in thought or reflective, like it's very challenging to do that. Um, and so I've been able to really create a lot more space for myself to do deep work and strategy and planning and reading. Um, that's, that's very important to me. I would also say, I mean, it's a 45 minute one way commute from door to door from here to my office. And so just having that extra hour and a half every day to do things that um, fill my cup, whether that's going for a walk or, um, you know, doing a workout or meditation or journaling or whatever that may be. I have an extra hour and a half every day to do that. Um, but then more recently, I've been going into the office one day a week because I did realize um, how much I was missing that human interaction. And I started to feel the, the bonds between myself and other folks kind of unraveling. And so just being in the office one day a week has been about right for me. And it's helped me achieve the balance that I want between like being able to do that deep work and then being able to build and foster those relationships with other hub spotters as we call our employees hub spotters I like it yeah it's and again as I said it's the beauty of it isn't it is that you can you can gauge how you feel on a particular day or you could you you in your calendar you've got what what you've got lined up for net you know you've got deep work in the morning or whatever it may be for you and mm -hmm. you can then adjust your environment you can adjust your schedule according to what you need to do what your priorities are and that's the, again that's another um beauty uh, for me of of the you know the the way that way of working so i'm fully on board with that as well i, I like that myself um and i think like i said i when I first looked at your profile, I could sense there was um, that you're really vested in your work. That that was my instinct um, from looking at your profile. That you're really vested in your work, um, and you you love your craft. And again, I, I I can't I can't say that about everybody that I look at whose LinkedIn profile I look at. But I had that instinct in me that that's that's what you're about. Um, so yeah. I wanted to find out a bit more about about that. Um, what drew you to the, the line of work that you're in now? So, yeah, it is. 
interesting that it's HubSpot's culture that drew me to HubSpot in the first place. I didn't know when I joined that I was going to be part of the culture team. It's, it's a bit of a full circle moment for me to be somebody that, you know, is influencing our culture uh, and, and thinking about it day in, day out. Um, but for me, I look, we spend so much of our lives at work, 40 plus hours every week. And um, I think life is too short to work at a place that, you know, we're not excited to get up and work at every day. Um, and I think culture is a big part of creating that workplace that that is best for each of us, but also it's important to the bottom line for the business. Um, when I think of culture, it's not just, a lot of people think of perks like ping pong tables and beer taps or whatever, but for me, it's the, it's the values and it's the, the rituals and practices of the business. It's the things that we have in common and the things that we value. Um, and so it's finding the things that are right for us and right for the business. Um, and so it's, it's, and it's ever evolving, right? Like I joined just before the pandemic hit the culture team, I should say. And so I was part of helping us think through how do we translate at, at the time we were mostly in an in office company. We had a good number of remote employees in the U S but pretty much everywhere else folks were working from an office. So I got to help us think through how do we translate our values and our practices and our rituals from an in-office um, setting to a fully remote setting. And then again, as the world started to open up, how do we then translate that into a hybrid setting so that it makes sense for people regardless of where they're working, whether they have access to an office or not. And and also, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen over the past couple of years is as the team is more distributed than ever, how do we keep people connected through all of this when, you know, we're so used to being able to connect serendipitously around a water cooler or in our hallways? How do we keep people connected now that we don't really have access to those places or not everybody does, I should say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a challenge. And I think that's the conversations I have is probably one of the, 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 the top in the top three, isn't it, of, of challenges of any any remote distributed hybrid business is keeping that that connectivity, keeping, you know, um, yeah, keeping con the connectivity between teams, between people, avoiding the um, silos and, and, and that sort of thing, keeping conversations going, all that, all those sorts of things. Um, and again, f was, because I know that um, the people that I talk to in uh, in who work in roles that are in culture, especially, uh, th they tend to also as well. And I sense this with you is that you really again you have to be vested in the, like you said, the you were talking about the values just now and the, and the, the way that the business works. Um, how because because being a distributed team, that's one of the things that I guess leaders have challenges in terms of communicating the values the, the ways of work how do you go about doing that and how do you yeah how do you go about doing that with hubspot yeah so uh, i'll say that my stance on this has evolved a couple of years ago i was of the mind that everybody we should everything that we do should be inclusive of everybody so any mm -hmm. uh it you know, any event that we did had to have a virtual option and an in-person option. And folks, there had to be all these different ways to engage with every single thing that we did. Um, my stance on that has evolved mostly because that didn't really work. Um, folks weren't engaging. Um, but my stance is now that we need to create something for everyone. Um, and folks is everyone's experience is going to be different. If you choose to work for HubSpot in Singapore, where I am, where we have an office, your experience is going to look different from somebody working in Montana, USA, mm -hmm. which is very far from any of our offices. But that's a choice that you make when joining a company. And that's, that's okay. You kind of have to be aware of the, the trade-offs there. Our goal isn't to make my experience and that person's experience exactly the same. 
our goal is to make sure that I have opportunities to engage and to connect with other HubSpotters uh, here in Singapore and in the office. And that employee out in Montana, USA, also has opportunities that are easy to engage with. Um, probably mostly virtual in nature because they're going to be probably far from just about anybody. Um, but we both have opportunities available to us. So I say all of that to say, when we think about our values as a company, they're encapsulated in the acronym HEART. If you've read our culture code, it's uh, humble, empathetic, adaptable, remarkable, transparent. So there are a number of different rituals that we have to reinforce those values. Um, so when we think about humility, we have something called the failure forum, which I believe we borrowed from another company, but it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a forum in which five or six people will get up and share a story where they have failed, whether that be in business or in their own personal life, and then kind of the lesson learned from that. And those are always very well received. People get to see, you know, show folks demonstrating real humility and growth mindset. Uh, and that would be one of the many examples that that I could share of how we reinforce our values. Um, and we're able to continue doing those regardless of where folks are located. No, I like that. Uh, I like that idea. And it's, again, like I said, there's challenges there, but I think what, what, from what I understand of HubSpot, everything is, 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 uh, is rooted in, or at least, like I said, the foundations are there to to help with, um, I guess, educate. I don't know if the word is educating, but but just d distributing. I can't even think of the right word, but um, helping people to understand the values and helping to, re I suppose, reinforce. I, I, don't, I don't even know. If, I can't even find the right words right now because yeah. I don't want to make it sound as though you're trying to hammer it down people's throats. But it's it's kind of. Because for me, values are so so important when it comes to the the, the process of um, connecting with 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 like minded people, whether that be through attracting talent, whether that be through working with different um, businesses. And I think I suppose what I'm trying to say is that um, from what I can see from the outside, HubSpot does it really really well. Um, hence my you know my gravitation towards that, and I you know. I, I know people who speak fondly of HubSpot as well, and that, that I think that's down to that sort of um, the, the bedrock that is there in terms of the the values, you know. So uh, yeah. yeah, I do I do like that about HubSpot. Um, and you said you're in Singapore. What what led you to be um, over in Singapore? Yeah, so I'm originally from Minnesota in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I always actually dreamed of living abroad, but never really had the opportunity to do so uh, until I was working for uh, my previous company, managing sales teams. Uh, at the time I was working in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, they were launching a new team here in Singapore. And my boss asked me if I'd be interested in coming out here and leading that team. And I jumped at the opportunity. I was here, I think, in two months after he first ran the idea by me. So I sold my car, moved all my stuff into storage. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very quick move out here. But uh, yeah, it was a dream come true for me. I didn't know much about Singapore, to be honest, at the time. But I learned very quickly. And yeah, I've been in Singapore now for eight, over eight years. So I haven't really looked back. It was a two-year contract with my old job that moved me here. And uh, I've wow. stayed much longer than that. And I, I don't know if it's it Singapore. Singapore is one of quite an expensive place to live. I've heard. Is it or is it? Um, it is. I think it is Singapore, yeah. isn't it? It's a fairly expensive place to live. But what, what's it like generally? What you know? I'm because I'm just personally interested. <laughs> yes, it can be very expensive. I think it's often between Singapore and Hong Kong, the most expensive place to live in the world. Uh, so the cost of living is quite high. But interestingly, there's, I think a big part of that is the cost of having an automobile, because there are six over million people on this very small island nation, they want to make it, uh, they want to have fewer cars on the road here. And so they have a, a fabulous public transportation system between the trains and the buses. They're very clean, very safe, very on time but they also make it more difficult to own a car here. And so in addition to the, the cost of the car itself, which is already going to be more expensive than it would be for like me back home, 
uh, they have this certificate of entitlement, which can be as much or more than the cost of the car itself. Right. Um, and so that makes the cost of owning an automobile very high, but there's not really, you don't need to have a car here. I don't have a car here. I don't miss driving. That was something mm -hmm. that back when I was driving into the office every day in Nashville, Tennessee, you know, you spend most of your time in the car in traffic, either on the way to or from work. And so my experience driving was never all that pleasant. Um, so I think that's a big contributor for the, to the cost of living. Um, but the truth is that there's a thing called hawker centers here. It's basically um, street food moved indoors, uh, essentially. And you can get a meal for like $3 here. And it's very good. There are some Michelin starred hawker stalls. Um, but then you can also, there's everything up to, you know, and including, you know, two, three Michelin starred restaurants here. So you can mm -hmm. spend as much as you want. Um, I think if you, if you have been here a while and you know how to do Singapore, you can live very frugally, very reasonably. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also possible to live not that way. On the other side. Yeah. <laughs> the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> Yeah. And has it helped? I mean, working in the way that you do, you know, hybrid, remote, uh, has it helped you to, like you said, that you're avoiding obviously having to drive a car into the office? Has it helped you in any other ways to sort of, I don't know, explore the city or, you know, do other things that perhaps you wouldn't, wouldn't have done had you been in the office? Yeah. You know, I haven't done this recently, but I was for a while every uh, Friday, I was going and cycling to the beach and working from there for the morning. Oh, nice. And that was, oh. now that I'm talking about it, I need to get back into it. It was a great routine. <laughs> and I'm from, like I said, Minnesota, which is about as far as you can get from any beach. So being, you know, a five minute cycle away from a beach is a real treat for me. And being able to take advantage of that atmosphere. And typically Friday mornings, I'm doing kind of my reading, my research, my reflecting. It's a great space to reflect. So that is, yeah, something that I just wouldn't have been able to do if I were working from the office full time. And I mean, I know you've kind of touched upon it when, when, we, I, when we opened up and you were telling me a bit about yourself in terms of your, the way your career is, has uh, progressed and you've transitioned. Um, in fact, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you, but this one first. Um, mm -hmm. When you, you know, has the bit, well, when you look back on your life and you sort of connect the dots that lead to where you are now or led to where you are now, what, what are those, what do those mm -hmm. dots look like? I think for me it was um, when what I'm good at, there's like an intersection of what I'm good at, what I'm passionate about and what the company needs. Like I only mm -hmm. have two hands, but imagine I can have three roads or <laughs> yeah, three I lines converging. And um, that's where I have found the most success. Um, you know, my journey from L&D to culture was completely because I was just interested in culture. As I mentioned, it's a big part of what drew me to HubSpot initially. And so once I joined, yes, I was like, getting into learning and development. And even that was brand new for me because I had come from managing sales teams to training sales teams. So there was a lot for me to learn. And so I did spend, you know, most of my calories trying to do that and do that well. But then I had such an interest in culture that I was just getting really involved in, in that. And where I saw gaps here, because we are a relatively small team relative to the, the rest of the business, there there were opportunities for me to take on different things here because we didn't have anybody else to do them. And so then when a more formal opportunity presented itself, like we needed, needed a manager of culture in the region, I was a shoe in because I had basically already been doing it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's those three lines converging and also just kind of like, you don't need, a, a, for me, I found that I don't need the job title. I don't need somebody to tell me that I can do something to do it, just like start doing it. And then, you know, maybe somebody will mm -hmm. see you. And, and when there is a, an opportunity to do that in a more official capacity, like it's always been me. No, I like that. I, yeah. And I think it, you've put your, your own stamp on it whilst, like you said, bringing people along with you. Um, you said it's a small team, but 
that it's because uh, I've spoken to other people who work in sort of like similar roles, and I think your role that the role that you have is so, so important. It's 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 integral to the integral to the bottom line of the business. You know, it's it's uh, it's mm -hmm. it's so important. It's also in, integral to the to the happiness of, of people in in the team as well, which which can't be underestimated. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask you is around the other question I wanted to ask you was because you yourself, you said you made it effectively, you made a transition to working in an, a, a more of an office based role now to working in a role that gives you that flexibility, hybrid uh, sort of setup. How was that transition for you? How, how did you navigate that transition from a personal standpoint? I, well, it was jarring because the only reason I actually started working from home was the same reason a lot of other people did, yes. the pandemic. Um, I, prior to that, I was working about, I had started maybe a few months prior working one day a week from home, but I didn't have a great setup. I was working from my couch with my laptop actually on my lap. And, you know, that's not, it's not a great setup. It's not good for, you know, ergonomics or my back or my shoulders. Um, but, you know, when the pandemic hit, I bought a I bought a proper desk and I bought a proper chair and I you know created a better setup for myself that was more conducive to you know at that time spending forty hours a week um, you know working from home so it was it was a bit of a hard landing I think many of us were in that same situation together but then as the weeks and the months progressed and I started to get used to this I you know kind of came to the realization that this was actually a better setup for me um, for, for the most of the things that I would need out of a setup. Um, but like I said, I, um, and I think this is probably unique to this pandemic time period, but I, both inside and outside of work, I was starting to lose connection with my social network. And so I have been, like I said, getting back into the office one day a week, but then also just trying to get out there and go out for dinner more and see my friends more and, you know, attend events and whatnot. Like if, remember how to be social and, you know, how to be part of society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, been, and when uh, you, it's been a journey. Yeah, it is. And I think you, you're right. It's a, it's a journey where you're adapting and you're finding out what works for you because somebody might advise you to do a certain thing in a certain way, but then you might do that thing. And it might not necessarily work for you, so, but you have to, yeah, like you said, it's you're experimenting, you're doing different things and you're seeing what not, what doesn't work. And sometimes your body will tell you what mm -hmm. doesn't work <laughs> as well. So yeah, <laughs> that's um, right. The other question I wanted to ask you is uh, around that is when you're, when you're hiring, um, are there any particular I suppose aside from reading up on HubSpot and going that little bit deeper in terms of understanding the business, what do you look for in, in people that you're hiring either in your team or in the wider, in the wider business? Yeah, I look well, and I tell this everybody in the interview as well. I look for somebody who is a self-starter and who's self-motivated. Um, I can be a motivator if I need to be, uh, I can micromanage it if I need to micromanage. Um, I believe there's, you know, flexible leadership is important. Um, but I work with and respond best to folks who are passionate about what they're doing, that don't need me to tell them to take action, that don't need my permission, that more want to lean on me to remove roadblocks or be a, a brainstorming buddy or to help them think through their uh, growth trajectory. And so I, I have built a team of people who are self-motivated, who are self-starters. And, you know, my job is just to give them the tools that they need to go do. And I found that to be very effective. Um, and especially so, I mean, even prior to the pandemic, although I was working from an office, I've long managed distributed teams. Um, I was managing, you know, people in Australia and Japan and Ireland and France and Belgium. And so, uh, even though I myself was in an office, I have years of experience managing distributed teams. And it it is important, especially when we're on time zones that are very far apart, that you're not having to wait on me all the time to tell you exactly what to do uh, every step mm -hmm. of the way. 
And on that, actually, do you work within your team? Do you generally work synchronously or, or do, you, do you have some element of asynchronous as well? It's a blend. Yeah. So uh, we, we lean very heavily into Slack. I'm also a big fan of voice notes on Slack. So if it's too long for a quick Slack, it's probably a voice note over an email because I will ruminate too long on emails as well. It'll probably mm -hmm. take me an entire day to send you the same email that it might take me two minutes to record in a voice note. Uh, but then we do have bi-weekly team meetings that rotate around time zones as well. And I have weekly one-on-ones with everyone that reports to me too. Got it. How about you mentioned that your team is small in relation to the rest of HubSpot. What, I suppose, where, two questions. Where is your team, where is your team in the, in that region that you're in? Where are they located and how, how big is the team? So we are three in the JPAC region. Uh, two in Singapore, one in Australia. And then we are, now I feel on the spot, in EMEA, we <laughs> are <laughs> two in Ireland, uh, one in France, and one in Belgium. Wow. Is so everybody. You... So quite small uh, relative to the size of the business. I think we're, you know, six, 7,000 plus employees globally. So um, a little is bit has to go is? a long way. Seven thousand. I didn't realize it was so many. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. And um, again, was an, another question that sprung, springs to mind because obviously HubSpot, um, for those, who, I mean, it's a tech business. Uh, was that a deliberate choice for you as well, or was it more sort of the the values that attracted you? Was it tech as well in mind? Honestly, it wasn't. I. Um, it, it wasn't tech, but I'm in retrospect glad that it was tech in mm -hmm. that um, it tends to move a little bit faster. And I'm also, I'm glad that I joined HubSpot when I joined HubSpot, when we were younger, smaller, scrappier. It gave me an opportunity to really move fast and kind of make my mark. Um, I'd be open to exploring non-tech in the future, but I think for where I was and where I am in my career, it's been really beneficial to be in tech. Mm -hmm. And talking about the future, what what excites you about? Is there anything that excites you about the future, whether that be from a personal standpoint or with HubSpot? Yeah, I, I look, we still haven't cracked the code on hybrid connectivity. So we are, I mean, that is my primary focus this year and probably in the next you know, couple of years as well, as we think about connection within teams, connection across teams, connection to the company, and I don't know that any company has really figured this out just yet. And so I'm still very excited about trying to solve this, iterating where it makes sense to iterate, learning from what other companies are doing and trying to find something that works for HubSpot. And if I can, sharing what I've learned um, with the broader community as well. So mm -hmm. I'm still very excited about all of that. Um, and then now that the world has opened up a bit more, just I'm very passionate about travel. So uh, getting to travel again, hopefully to see more of my colleagues as well. I haven't traveled for business since 2019, I think. So um, I'd love to see some colleagues that I haven't seen in a while I, and meet some that I have never, I've never met my boss, uh, for example. She lives in <laughs> Dublin. I would, I'm very much looking forward to meeting her hopefully later this year. Sounds good. Uh, and, and yeah, travel is something that's one of, on my bucket list as well. But yeah, it's, it's uh, again, it's yeah. one of those things that uh, hybrid work and remote work enables you to do. So that, that's a good thing. And you mentioned um, learning from other companies. Um, are there any other particulars that you can mention in terms of that, off, I suppose, that you look at and, or, or are favorites of yours at all? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot to learn from Atlassian. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, Dropbox has a really interesting hybrid toolkit that I'm hoping to borrow from uh, <laughs> to and adapt here internally. I think there's a lot of great tools in there that folks can kind of just grab and go. Those are two that I'm looking at right now. Um, and then conversely, there's a lot of things that choices that companies are making right now relative to hybrid that I, you know, kind of like what not to do as well. So it's mm -hmm. an interesting mix. There's a lot of folks that are experimenting with some really interesting things. And, and there are other folks that are making choices that I 
I'm not really bought into it. So we'll have to see how things kind of shake out over the next year or so. Sounds good. Sounds good. But whatever happens, and uh, I was wanted to say thank you for, for joining me today, Greg. It's been really interesting getting to know you. Uh, and of course, I'll be keeping track of, of, of your progression. I have more questions to ask, but I know that you've uh, got a busy... <laughs> pro- well, actually, no, you're on a... You're, what time is it there at the minute? What, what time is it in Singapore? It's at the moment? what? Uh, 5.38 in the afternoon. I was about or to evening, say you're I about guess, to start your day. So yeah, so you're about, <laughs> you're finishing your day. Um, but it's been good to, good to chat. Uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, yeah, I wanted to wish you and HubSpot all the best for the future. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. It's been great chatting with you and uh, wishing you and uh, remote, remote work life all the best as well. Thank you.